Today on Beers TV, it's the best calcium test kit of 2019, and I think you're gonna be surprised at what you see. We've got six calcium test kits here. You don't always get to open each one up before you buy them, so we're gonna share what we like, what we didn't like, and at the very end, give our thumbs up to the best of 2019. Uh, I can tell you right now, I learned something from this, so I'm almost certain that at the end of this, you're gonna know exactly which one of these test kits best fit your desires and be real, real confident about it. All right, we're gonna start with the uh, Hannah Checker here. This is actually like the second most expensive thing on the table here. And I guess we'll just start with what you like. Well, for the, the biggest thing is it's a digital readout. So uh, if I don't like to read colors or if I can't, can't read colors because I'm colorblind, uh, this is the one for me. Yeah, I think that's about it, man. I mean, the biggest benefit is definitely uh, that you get to be able to see a digital number come on the front. Mm -hmm. But that's about where it stopped for me. <laughs> right. Uh, and you know what? We had a lot of consistency problems when we've tested this. And I've used it in the past. And I can just tell you that I just did the test over and over and over again. And I could be off by 30 points from one to the next. Mm. And I just really, really paying close attention to how I performed it. And it was really hard. Yeah. What do you think that is? Yeah, the dilution step has got to be the, the toughest point. It's like 101 to dilution step, which means you take 9 mils of RODI water, then you take 1 mil of reagent A, and you dilute the, uh, all that is diluted by your 0.1 mil of sample water. So you're really only testing 0.1 mil of your saltwater aquarium. So that seems to uh, throw the reading off, you know, anywhere of 40 parts per million or so. Yeah, I mean, 100 to 1 dilution means there's just so many areas. One little micro drop of water will throw the whole thing off. So uh, I do think it's probably good enough to get you close into a range that, uh, as long as you're not super concerned about whether or not you're 420 or, or uh, 440 or whatnot, mm -hmm. it's probably not that big of a deal. In most cases, it'll get you close. But if you're going to go correct for that, don't be surprised if you uh, end up playing med scientist. And really, when we did it, uh, and we did five of us testing it, the range was a hundred different point range. Yeah. And I'll be honest, like uh, I failed it the most, and I was off by the most. So if you throw mine out, it's still like a 40 point range. Yeah, uh, for consistency, the low was 422, the high was 523 out of all of us who, who have tested it. So uh, in that department, it, it kind of uh, hit the bottom end for me. But you know, cost-wise, 49.95 for the orig for the first kit, first initial purchase price. Uh, and then they do have reagents on top of that. So it is expensive up front. The reagents kind of help buffer that after you get the kit to the kit, which at $23 for a set of reagents, you're looking at about 92 cents a test. All right, how many thumbs? Uh, I want to give it like a half a thumb because it's just so difficult. And, and I like to have my calcium range be a little more accurate than plus or minus like 40 or 50. So. Uh, I, for the sake of not having a half thumb, uh, I'll give it one thumb. I got done. Sorry. Uh, I just, I, I love, love, love the Hannah checker, alkalinity checker, but this one, uh, it's too much work for me to do and doesn't get me into a tight pocket where I can actually control. So I got to give it none. So yeah. sorry about that. Okay. Right, next one. So the next one is the Lamont Calcium Hardness Test Kit. So this is another one of those lab type kits that they sell. I really actually did like the uh, alkalinity one a lot. Some yeah. of them transfer over to salt water. Some of them are better used in fresh water. Uh, this is probably gonna be a little hint uh, better for fresh water than salt water, mm -hmm. but uh, let's start with the things you do like. Liked about it, it's got that lab geekiness to it. So, I mean, you have your syringes, you've got your vials and your droppers. This one, you draw the reagent from the bottom of the bottle, which is really cool. Uh, so, I mean, and the packaging and everything as far as like the hard shell box that keeps, you know, salt water and water out. Uh, really cool in that factor. Also, my other like is uh, rather than a spoon and trying to level off the spoon, I get a tablet. Yeah. And I can just drop the tablet in, swirl it until it dissolves, and I'm done. So there's no guesswork there. This is something I wish that other test kits would pick up. Uh, should be simple, spoon. super simple to do, too. Yeah, you'd think so. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's uh, about where the good news stops, <laughs> uh, uh, for me, anyway. Yeah. And so uh, this is one of those test kits, again, that uses a dilution step. Mm. So you have to dis dilute your uh, uh, salt water in the fresh water to get your reading. And you need to multiply it because it reads out in the calcium carbonate equivalent and uh, ultimately not super accurate. We got a range of like over 200, I think at 50, uh, eight yeah. maybe it was, uh, from the five different people that performed this test. 
It was really, really wild results. So Yeah, I think the, the hardest part about this one is a couple of things. Well, there's a couple of things that are really uh, difficult for me on this one is, one, the, the math involved. So the syringe, uh, each graduation is like 40, and then you have to multiply that f by 5.16 to get your parts per million. So not really made for the saltwater hobby and how we read calcium in parts per million. Mm -hmm. And even, uh, actually, the, the color change, uh, it happens so subtly and it only lasts for such a short amount of time that Aaron just gave up after a while. He just couldn't do it. He tried so three like different times. Blue to purple or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And uh, it says if it changes back to blue within five seconds, you're done. Yeah. And like, so, I mean, it changes, but if it changes back, you're, you're done. And I sat there and watched Aaron do it three times, and then he was going to do it again. I just told him to you know, give up. <laughs> again, we were all off by as much as 250. Yeah. So uh, it's just like we learned what we needed to learn right there. And so uh, it's also the most expensive. This is yeah. 60 bucks. It's even more than the checker. So yeah, uh, at 60 bucks, you only get 50 tests and it doesn't, the, there's no reagents and stuff uh, that we carried on it anyway. Uh, so that ends up working out to be a dollar 20 per test for your 50 tests, which for the expensiveness and the complexity and the and the difficulty, uh, we just decided to not carry it anymore. Yeah. Uh, so, well, I mean, <laughs> that kind of tells the thumbs. So, how many thumbs? Uh, I, I two thumbs down. That I guess. Down too. Um, I have to give two thumbs down. Uh, you know what? I think this kind of made it into the mix just because we all like the alkalinity one a lot mm -hmm. and said, hey, why don't we bring in the calcium one? Yeah. And sometimes things kind of squeak through there. After testing it, though, uh, this just doesn't meet our standards. And so uh, this just isn't a good test kit for a solar aquarium owner. Yeah. So uh, there's one left that's being <laughs> clearance on the website. So uh, what did you say you could get I said, it for? Get a piece of history. History. Uh, yeah, yeah, piece of history. Otherwise, Maybe not use it, but. Don't use it. Uh, so it's interesting to note the two most expensive options here uh, probably not going to be the ones that we use. Yeah. Not. So uh, I don't know. Let's look at the next one. So the Salifert test kit is next and uh, this one definitely performed better. I'm sure most of you would uh, assume that man. So what's the first thing you like? And first thing I like about this one is uh, for me the reading on the syringe. So this is one for me that uh, <laughs> Uh, I find it really easy when the when the manufacturer makes the end point on the syringe easy to read to where if it's between the two mark and the three mark, say at the halfway, I mean that's two and a half and I go to my little chart and I see what is two and a half and it gives me a reading. So I don't have to do math, I don't have to think about it too hard, I just look at the syringe, look at the card, I know my calcium. Uh, uh, so my, some of them ask you to do the opposite, right? Yeah, Which yeah. is like read how much you do. So, you do two and a half and you do the subtraction on that, you know, you use seven and a half. Yeah. Right? Right. Well, I mean, subtraction isn't super hard, man, but like, uh, you know, maybe you've had a, a couple beers and you got <laughs> uh, like 1.8 and you got to do the math. Like, there's just no necessary reason for having to do it that way, do mm -hmm. any math. So definitely being able just to go to 1.8 and then look in the chart and see 1.8 is nice. Yeah. I do also like... Um, for the color change on this one, and and this is reminiscent of the alkalinity best of too, where uh, Salifert's instructions, the colors that are indicated on the instructions, really, really closely, if not exactly, match what you should expect in the test. This was my favorite part about doing this with the Salifert test. Uh, I haven't seen their instructions in a while, and so like looking at the new instructions or newer instructions and seeing how well the color matches uh, the endpoint, mm. I just thought that that was uh, really nice because a lot of them do a pretty poor job at mm. that. So right. just refreshing to look at it like, yep, that's that. Yeah. Right. Hey, last but not least uh, for likes is this is the cheapest one. Yeah. So, yep. I mean, at 25 cents a test when you're $18.81 or right, right around there. So it makes it 25 cents a test. Uh, out of out of the options that we tested here, this is by far the most cost effective. Yeah, I'll just say also like not only does the color here uh, easy to read against the color chart, but I actually found for me to be one of the more distinct color changes too. So mm. I I found it really easy to perform and do, and it's the cheapest. Uh, so there's a lot of really th good things to like about the Salford kit for sure. What didn't you like though? Well, I didn't like the fact that uh, there were some consistency differences between the five different people that performed it, and there was a 60-point difference between all five of us uh, doing it. Yeah. And my mm. guess... Not our worst. Not uh, the best, too, though. It isn't the worst one out there, and it's yeah. not the best. Uh, my guess, though, is not that it's like changing the reading each time. 
Uh, it's probably more so that you're reading the endpoint differently than another person. Right. You went like one or two more drops than somebody else. I tend to, you know, decide where it changed color and then take note of where it's at and then drop another drop and see if it continues to change and I'll take the end point where it's changed mm. color fully. And so that's the way that I do it. Uh, but, uh, you know, some, some other people might change it right away and, you yeah. know, that's probably representative of it. That related to that too though, I also don't like that it uses a two milliliter sample. So this is on the lower end of the sample size for some of these test kits. Mm -hmm. Lower end of the sample means that I have more area to mess this up. Right. Right. If I get slightly more than two milliliters or slightly less, or I uh, mess up how much water, air bubble in there or whatnot, it can throw the reading off more. All the other procedures need to be more accurate now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the smaller the sample size, in my experience, has been uh, larger the uh, inaccuracy window. So, well, you're talking about the accuracy of the other steps after the two mil size, and this mm. is probably where my biggest gripe comes in about this one is uh, the reagent dropper bottle. I mean, this is probably lower quality components than the rest of them, which does inherently make it uh, you know more cost effective. Uh, but sometimes I'll open up this, uh, you know, the dropper bottle, and if you squeeze a little too hard or give it a, a slight little bump or shake, it might actually uh, drop more than just a single drop. So the consistency of other dropper bottles versus this one, uh, this one's probably my least favorite. Yeah, you know, in, in the end, there's a reason why it's the cheapest one out there. And, you know, most of the chemistry in a lot of these things are pretty similar. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, you're using a sam smaller sample size, so you can use a smaller amount of reagent. Mm. You know, the containers and stuff are clearly the cheapest container that you could get this thing in and fill it. And so uh, you get what you pay for. But, you know, in the end, I think it's a, a pretty good mix, man. Uh, so two thumbs, one thumbs, no thumbs? Uh, for the cost, for the reading endpoint ease, and uh, I mean for the instructions, even though they are paper, so they'll probably get a little wet down the road. Uh, you know, all in all, this one, I'm definitely giving this at least a one and a half thumb. I'm going the whole way. So based on the fact that it's the cheapest, it's delivering on that value price point. Okay. You, know, you got good, better, best, good being the, the thing that's the cheapest and actually does its job. The better one being the one that's probably the one that everybody will end up using, uh, but you know, not the most expensive. And then there's the Cadillac that's like three times as much, right. but only 20% better. That's uh, kind of not the end that most people pick on. This one actually, I think it's just a perfect mix of value in the essence that it's not perfect, but I think it will do the job and it will do it the cheapest. So, next one. Yeah. Red Sea Calcium Test Kit uh, is next here, and there's a whole slew of things that actually we both liked about this one. And yeah. so, I guess I'll just start with the components on it, man. It is very clear that every piece of this thing, somebody chose to take a higher end road than the lower one, all the way from the glass bottles mm. to an actual dropper unit and uh, you know clear reagent containers. Uh, even a plastic box, this thing's being used around water, so when I touch it with a wet hand, it's not gonna get destroyed. Same thing with the laminate card so like front to end somebody actually cared about this mm. when they put it together it's gonna cost a little bit more but like uh, the components uh, show it yeah so in this one it was our best kit for consistency out of uh, mm -hmm. five of us testing it only a difference of 10 parts per million between the high and the low of 485 and 495 which means it seems like everybody who puts their hands on this kit can get some degree of the same reading out of all of them. And that's probably due to a couple of things. One, the end point, super easy to read. When, it, when the color changes from the purple to the blue, I mean, you know, and it's pretty distinct. Oh. And uh, on top of that, it uses a five mil sample. So you get more sample water to actually test, so. Yeah, so the sample size, again, we're doing five milliliters, which means uh, if I'm not perfect with it, it has less of an impact on the results. Again, it's only 10 parts per million off from five different people doing mm. it, meaning that the results were repeatable, probably just in chemistry accuracy, but also where each person reads that endpoint. Yeah. And so that's a pretty big win. And I gotta tell you, like that first part, it could be all nice glass bottles and containers and stuff. If it doesn't produce any results, it really doesn't matter, right? Yeah, true. So it's nice when you know the components and the approach actually match the results uh, and pr produce a result, I yeah. guess. Uh, one of the things I actually really liked about this glass vial 
is at first I disliked that it was kind of hard to clean, right? Mm, yeah. So it used to get like a little crust in there from I mix it up and mm -hmm. I can never really rinse it out. Now what I do is I just fill it up with RODI water while I store it and it never forms anything. And it's just really easy to keep all of them clean where some of the other ones, it, it doesn't have the same ability. And glass cleans where plastic uh, just doesn't. So it's kind of nice. Yeah, I think, I know it's not your personal favorite because you don't, you, you don't like to use it, but I'm, I'm a big fan of this titrator. Just like I was for the alkalinity and the magnesium portion for Red Sea. Uh, I'm a big fan of this titrator. It's one-handed. I can put my little uh, syringe in there and then as I'm shaking, I have one hand and I'm shaking, squeezing, shaking, squeezing, and I can just do all of this with one hand. For me, that's a that's a lot easier in that I can watch the uh, I can watch the endpoint. Like you said, when you take notice of uh, the endpoint and then continue, uh, it's a little more difficult for me to be shaking down here, shaking down here, then kind of hold the syringe back and do this. This one I can just watch it the whole way through and. That's a big selling point for me. I will say I don't like it. So I, I wanted really bad to like it, and I liked it when it came out, and I've talked about it before. But for me, I think I would actually like it if there was more tension on the uh, syringe that they chose to use. Mm. Uh, because I end up squirting out. It's just not enough pressure, back pressure on it. Mm. And so I end up squirting out uh, reagent and little bursts. And so if they put a little bit more tension on it, I might actually like to use it. But uh, the way that I like to do it is more traditional. And mm -hmm. I, I can create tension on the top with my finger okay. here and makes just pushing on it. Yeah. So, you know, but it's each their own. You know, it is definitely an advantage to it. You can do it one hand if you like, and it doesn't spill that way, yeah. which is really nice. Well, it's funny that we all, all had that level of consistency using this syringe because you know much like we said about these other syringes uh, for the red sea and this is probably my only dislike about this uh, the red sea calcium here is that it is one of those where you do have to do the math on uh, you convert how much you used and the syringe is backwards graduated like the rest of these so it does count from 1.0 down to 0 0.1 and then at the end you can if you go past five or six or seven or if you go past the, the numbers you use five six or seven and the actual endpoint is in the four, three, and the two range. So I just kind of got to do that quick math and then go to my card and read how much I used to get my endpoint. Yeah, so if it reads 7.2, uh, or I'm sorry, 2.2, normally on a lot of these tests you just go read 2.2. In this case, I'm going to have to go look up 7.8 and do the subtraction. Yeah. Like, not that big a deal, but also it wouldn't be that big of a deal just to have the uh, instructions actually read the endpoint and not require the end user to do the math. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we've even like addressed that by selling little packs of syringes that have this in reverse. So mm -hmm. if you use Red Sea test kits, you can actually go buy uh, those sy uh, syringes in reverse and skip that math. True. So, so thumbs up, thumbs down on well, this one. You gotta hit the cost first, man. Well, this so. one, so this one is, a, it depends on how you buy it. Yep. So if uh, most people will probably buy it in this three pack foundation pro kit where mm -hmm. you get the calcium and you get the magnesium and you get the alkalinity. Uh, if you buy the calcium on its own, it's 40 or it's 34.99. So that's just the calcium pro test kit, which makes the 75 tests right at 47 cents a test. If you buy just the reagent, so you've already purchased the cost of it, or you're just buying reagents for your foundation pro, Foundation, the reagent is $17.99, which drops that cost to only $0.24 cents a test. Yeah, so it's kind of messy because almost everybody would buy it in that kit. Uh, most people don't buy it as a standalone kit, and some people will buy the reagent refills. Uh, so like, it, it can be various in price. It won't be the most expensive and it won't be the cheapest. So. Thumbs, I'm gonna go on this one. Uh, you already hit it, I saw those two thumbs. I think we're both gonna go two, <laughs> thumbs, two thumbs on thumbs. this one. Uh, you can't get around the fact that it is definitely affordable. Yeah. Uh, what, you can you know, slice and dice the pennies one way or another. Definitely affordable. It'll definitely last because all the components are water resistant and it was the consistent. best, cons most consistent results yeah. of the day. Five different people got a very, very similar result. And uh, uh, I don't know, two thumbs all the way. So the next up is the calcium test kit from NIOS, and uh, I'll let you go with what you like first. I mean, right off the bat, this thing looks nice. Uh, the black bottles, the black packaging, the dual syringe. I do like the, the dual syringe, but I like the titration syringe on this one in particular. Uh, something about the really fine long tip on this one just to me feels like I can get more accuracy. And you had mentioned that it has really good tension where I'm not 
doing spurts and squirts into the it's into the jar. Really easy to get single little droplets out of it because there's a proper amount of tension in the, yeah. in the uh, syringe for sure. That's about where it stops. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, so I hate to say it, uh, it kind of goes down from there. There was a syringe in here. That, you know, they only do a one milliliter sample size, so they do give you a more accurate rather than using like one of these and only using half. You get an accurate one milliliter from this. But the one milliliter accuracy or uh, uh, sample size, I think, was part of the reason why the results were a little all over the board. Yeah, we yeah. ended up with 85 parts per million difference between five people testing with this NIOS kit, uh, with a low of 475 and a high of 560. So not the most consistent and not the worst consistent, but on the upper end. Uh, and be that range uh, with the color change. I mean, so the color change alone is pretty subtle. It's really light colors, like a really light blue and a really light pink. Uh, but if you look at the card, the card has bright red and bright blue, and then it's not what you should expect. It did not match the color in here, uh, for sure. I don't even think they're making an attempt on that one. It's just mm. kind of a more basic viewpoint on it. But the one milliliter of liquid at the bottom was also just harder to look through mm. and, and see. So, you know, all in all, the accuracy just kind of wasn't there. Uh, you're only doing a one milliliter sample. It's probably related to accuracy. I shouldn't say accuracy. Consistency, Consistency. Yep. is a better term. And they're 40 cents a test kit. So it is more expensive than most out there. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, thumbs? Uh, I'm going to give this one a half of them. I'm just, I'm just gonna not vote. It didn't. I, I, I just uh, didn't get. Uh, I guess I give it no thumbs. Uh, I just didn't get out of it that I would use this uh, for any particular yeah. reason. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive than most out of there. Uh, the consistency of the results weren't there, and I just didn't like the one milliliter sample. Mm -hmm. I do believe it's going to affect the accuracy. All right. So the last one's coming up next. So I think we're gonna have our thoughts in the winter in just a second, but we're also gonna get the Aquaforest calcium test kit. So I will let you go first again. Yeah, so this one has, my favorite part about this one is Aquaforest includes a reference solution in their test kits. And that is something that you can check yourself on. So uh, you can actually check, check your testing procedure to make sure that uh, it matches or comes close to matching that reference solution. I think their resolution uh, on that is somewhere between like 10 and 20 parts per million where they say, this, you, this test kit should read that reference solution within that range, which is about a standard range for a lot of these different test kits. So my favorite, they have a reference solution that you can check yourself uh, to make sure you're testing properly. Yeah, and it can actually kind of teach you where the end point is mm. to some degree, because you know that that's where you should be stopping. True. So uh, that is one very, very, very cool thing about that test kit, uh, or about the Aquaforest Calcium test kit. Mm -hmm. uh, so anything else that you liked about it? Uh, the endpoint reading on this one is much like uh, like Saliford and these other and a couple other ones where the syringe you takes the, it takes the guesswork out of uh, where your endpoint is. So again, if I end up between 2.2 and 0.3, say so I get 0.25, I can just go to the card, look at 0.25, and get my calcium reading. I don't have to do the backwards math. All right, again, it's a two uh, uh, milliliter sample, right? So that could mean uh, accuracy uh, differences or, or consistency differences here. Uh, and this one was kind of strange to me because I went way, way over and everybody else hit a very flat 500. Right? Yeah, so with most of these test kits, almost all of them actually, the end point of each one for one mil of uh, reagent, of titration, uh, titration solution, ends at 500. So it was kind of interesting that four of us just ended right at 500. Last drop was the last reading. Yeah, it's just funny how that works that way. But you can, uh, along with most of these test kits, almost all of them, you can continue the test to like see if it go, you go beyond 500. And that's what you ended up doing and ended up at 550. So a 50 part per million difference between all four of us and you. Um, but I mean, the average, the average of all of the tests that were conducted for the for that uh, test was 512. So 500 is not that off, not that far so off. So four people read it exactly the same. It is a little suspicious that it was 100% of the tri trent in there. Uh, again, I always, I think I might have actually thought maybe it was over, and then I went and pulled some more out and continued. And I thought it changed this color more, you know. So, but I think it'd be easy to say, oh, that was the end, mm -hmm. uh, when you run out, yeah. right? So it's a little suspicious there, but at the same time, 
the 500 is super, super close to like the 512 that was the average of all of the test kits. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was pretty darn accurate where everybody stopped. Uh, definitely more than where I stopped. So yeah. I, I don't know. I give this kind of a suspicious, like really, really consistent. Uh, yeah. More consistent than any of the rest of them. None of the other ones had four where they all stopped at the same place. No, uh, I mean the only the the only better one that was better in consistency by ten parts per within ten parts per million was the Red Sea. So this one at fifty part per uh, fifty part per million difference in consistency, uh, just rated it right on this yeah. on second there. And actually, uh, for this one, it would probably be uh, for me one of the ones I go to because also the price is right on this one at seventeen ninety nine. You get about fifty five to sixty five ten. Tests uh, out of the Aqua Forest, so seventeen ninety nine makes it thirty cents a test. Yeah, I mean, so how many thumbs here, man? Uh, I'm a one thumb on this one. I am uh, definitely a one, and I, uh, if I could do it again, I might even give it two. Because if, if five hundred across the board, I just am suspicious about the end point, and I kind of wish the sample size was a little bit bigger mm. to uh, make it probably a little bit more accurate. All right, so uh, best of 2019 coming up. All right, starting with the best of show for 2019, Red Sea Test Kit for sure. This one takes both of my thumbs, uh, best in show for 2019. It's got everything I want, consistency, it's got quality components, uh, it's the one I would go to. It's also affordable. Uh, it's not the cheapest, but it's also not the most expensive. And uh, I think that uh, at this point, this is what I'm gonna use. This is what I'm using. All right, best of value though for 2019, undeniably the salad for test kit for sure. Yeah, 25 uh, cents a test and, and relatively consistent and easy to read. That makes it my uh, most economical choice. Without all the data, to be honest, if I hadn't gotten done all of them, when I did this one personally, I actually was super satisfying and I really liked it, specifically the color change on there. And this would be best of show. So one of the things we we're looking for from 2020 from both of these guys, so some improvements, uh, hopefully somebody from over there is watching. If they're not, you guys can tell them. Uh, for this one, Salifert, I would definitely like to see an improvement on this dropper bottle because it makes a mess like it half drops all the time. True. So uh, that one, Let's, bet, let's improve that for 2020. Red Sea, I would like you to change the syringe. Like nobody does it that way. And we've even come up with a package here internally in BRS for different types of syringes just for your test kit. Just do this for us. Yeah, I, I don't. I haven't met a single person that likes to read it backwards. It isn't that big of a deal, but it also isn't that big of a deal to do it the right way. Yeah. Uh, skip the math. There's absolutely no reason to do the math. Uh, but there's one thing that is definitely playing out here uh, a little bit is that uh, one test kit isn't necessarily the best on everything. And we're going to find that out with magnesium here pretty soon. We'll do mm -hmm. those one of those as well. Uh, probably phosphate and nitrate in the upcoming oh, yeah. months as well. But one thing that shows out is Salford so far seems to be winning that value price point. Uh, they got it last week with the mm -hmm. alkalinity test kit. The best in show last week was really the Hannah, the Hannah Checker. Checker. There's no doubt about Absolutely. that one. Uh, in this case, the uh, Red Sea won uh, the calcium uh, uh, best in show. I doubt that they're going to win it in magnesium next week. Nah, uh, I don't know. I don't yep. know. Yeah, because that thing, five drops and shaking is yeah. there's a lot of steps. So I don't know. I think we're going to find out. And uh, I would definitely sign up. And we are starting a brand new uh, playlist that's going to be all of our best of 2019 videos. So if you're looking for really anything that we might cover and you want to know what we think is the best, man, go ahead and hit the playlist right there. And you'll get to see it. So, see you next week. Take care.